It's the second season. Playoff football is next right here on Cable 10. Welcome, folks, once again to Benny Watkins Field here at Franklin County High School. I'm Clint Goins, and with me, as always, Chris Cole. Chris, it's hard to believe that we're already at playoff time. It seems like, uh, you know, the start of the season was just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, this season has flown by. First real true season we've had in a couple of years. No yeah. COVID, no interruptions. Um, we've really had great weather all yeah. season. One of the reasons it feels, it feels like it's, it's brand new still is the fact that we've had about the same weather every week. We've been so blessed. You know, we've not had a, a rainstorm sloppy game. It's not gotten real cold. Uh, you know, today we almost set a record high in early November. Uh, it's just been incredible weather on Friday nights here in yeah. the capital city. Yeah, and, and this is where it all truly begins, is week one of the playoffs. Survive in advance, and we got a new format this year uh, where you go back to the cross-district which uh, I like. like it was uh, several years ago. Uh, so we're facing John Harden from one of the cross districts. Because uh, if it wasn't that way, we'd, it, we'd be playing, uh, Franklin County will be playing. North Oldham. Uh, you know, which is a team they've already played. Mm -hmm. You know, like, well, whoop de do. Yeah. You know, they played them just uh, three weeks ago or whatever it well, was. Well, and I was talking to some. Franklin County uh, staff tonight, uh, pregame, we were discussing the new playoff format. They're realigning in week three of the instead of the semifinals now, uh, so that if you have a power one and a power two out of the same district, uh, they could meet later in the playoffs instead of second week. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good. Well, uh, I guess we should state this. Franklin County, of course, is playing, and uh, they are hosting the uh, Bulldogs from John Harden High School. They're out of E-Town. They finished third in their district. Franklin County finished second. Uh, the Bulldogs, though, they only had a, a two-win season. They were two and eight, and still... Managed to, to finish third in a five-team district. So, now, what else can you tell us about the Bulldogs of John Harden High School? Well, you know, in the early 2000s and even the early 2010s, teens, you should say, John Harden was a predominant powerhouse in the state of Kentucky in football. Yes. Um, well, Franklin County run into that bus saw a couple times in the playoffs in history. Uh, you know, they're a power team. They don't put a whole a lot of balls in the air. Uh, they're going to run uh, predominantly probably 90% of the time uh, on offense. But so does Franklin County. Franklin County not putting a whole lot of balls in the air this season. Either, especially since they've had some quarterback injuries. Hurst went down earlier in the year. Then you had Claudio, and I think Elijah Smith is taking the helm at QB tonight. Well, let me tell you this. I was looking at the stats. Look for number three for the Bulldogs. His name is uh, Lason Anderson, and he already has a thousand yards on the season with only. 80 some odd carries. Yeah, and that's so that, only that nine you, games. And that's only nine games reported. Their last game last week, 
the stats wasn't reported. Uh, so he had almost He's 11. averaging over 10 yards a carry. Yeah, but he hasn't played a defense like Franklin Kelly. Well, that's either. probably true. That's probably true. All right, kicking off here. Easton Powell, I believe it is, for the Flyers. And the Bulldogs initially fumble, but it's uh, picked up by Lamoris Bowen. 5'10 senior, 160 pounds. Gets it out to about the 23. As you look at it again on our Whitehead Hancock instant replay. I think he was tackled by Claudio, was he not? I think they said Robinson in on the tackle. Oh, Brennan Robinson. Not not number 10, but number 20. I saw the zero. And that was a nice uh, fake on the handoff. Second man through. Yeah, that time they run that belly read. Uh, QB able to give it to the second man through, like you said, and uh, able to gain uh, four yards on the first mm -hmm. day. Machiavelli, Rozier. You don't hear of many kids named the Machiavelli. The quarterback is Jabari Wilson. For the Bulldogs. He hands off this time to Cavalli Pittman. So four is Cavalli and five is Machiavelli. Yeah, not a whole lot going that time off the left side. Good defensive pressure right away. A host of Panther uh, uh, Flyers, rather, in there. Get my T's mixed up again, Chris. Uh, in there. We had the Panthers last week. Uh, but a host of flyers and on the tackle. Be a flock of flyers. A flock of flyers. I guess it would be, yeah. The pride of Panthers and a flock of flyers. Again, second man through, and he's going to be close. I think he's going to get it. That was Rozier again. He's a he's a hoss. He's. 5'10", 196. So he's got some meat on his bones. Yeah, low center of gravity, hard runner right up the middle. And we've not seen number three touch the ball yet. Anderson. No. And by the way, Anderson is just a freshman and I, Maybe there he's in there now. But John Harden caused a timeout here here early in the game. We'll step aside as well. This is playoff football on cable ten. David Toll's Auto Pro customers can't go anywhere without him. No matter where life takes you, the David Tolls Auto Pro nationwide warranty is by your side. Game of the Week is brought to you by David Tolls Auto Pro. You're in good hands with David Tolls Auto Pro. Bring your vehicle to us for the best repairs in the Frankfurt area. Two locations at 1348 Versailles Road and 515 Duncan Road. And check us out at davidtollsautopro.com. First and 10 for the John Harden Bulldogs. The handoff this time to Anderson, and my guess is the Flyers, as the tackle is made there by uh, Jaleed Galloway, my guess is Coach James has probably told them about Anderson, and uh, if you see number three in the game, uh, focus on him. Well, there's so much film by this time of the year. Uh, you start picking up on tendencies um, and you start keying 
on those tendencies and the three being the heavy workload. And that's a tackle for a loss. That's Brennan Robinson again. I think that was a muffed play. Yeah, uh, the snap was bobbled. And quarterback really lucky to keep a hold of that. Yes. So this is going to bring up third and 11. And in a third long situation with a team that doesn't put the ball in the air a whole lot, not a whole lot of options you got here. Yeah, they only pass for about, uh, well, less than 20 yards a game. And another tackle for a loss. Uh, and may have been a little bit of a mix up in the backfield. So they will punt it away. I think Wilson was looking for somebody to give the ball to there and nobody was showing up. Yeah, that time he turned out of the snap. Nobody there, your guard, your weak side guard was pulling. This is Jake Owen, number 85. He's the kicker and the punter. And a little fumble there. But the Flyers hang on. Hunter Gottschall, I believe it was. Luckily, he got a decent bounce back up to him. Yeah, because John Harden was closing in fast on that. The Morris Bowen, number 22, who I think was a person that fumbled the kickoff for John Harden at the beginning of the game, was the one that was uh, in on the tackle. All right, first and 10 for the Flyers on the 37 yard line. And that is straight up the middle. To Caden Campbell, I believe. Nope. Galloway. Galloway. Two, seven. The numbers are similar. Especially when they're being uh, pulled by a defender. Eight yards on the carry. Home. No, I think that may have been intended for Caden Mormon, who's number one to see there in the picture. Yeah, but he's given the uh, pat of the chest, the international my bad symbol. Emmanuel Smith is a Flyers quarterback. Hands it off to Mormon this time, right up the middle, and he's got enough speed to get into the end zone. And that's the Mormon that we've seen the last couple years. Yes, yes. Explosive through that front line, and then the speed to take it to the distance. Yeah, and just put it into, into overdrive, and, and I don't think he was ever touched. No, that was a good play call too, by the way. Easton Powell will be the place kicker here. Ball is down, the kick is up, and it's good. So the Flyers lead seven to zero here early in the first quarter here on Cable 10. I believe in Kentucky. I believe in Kentucky. <laughs> I believe in getting your hands dirty. I believe the best recipes are never written down. I believe in fried chicken, cornbread, and soup beans. 
I believe in the cards. I believe in cats. I believe in insurance coverage that helps you sleep at night. I believe in always carrying an umbrella. I am Kentucky. I am Kentucky. Welcome back, folks. Each team has had one uh, possession. The Bulldogs of John Harden had to punt theirs away, and Franklin County scored on a, gosh, how far was that 55-yard run? 55-yard run by Caden Mormon right up the middle. Untouched. I don't think he ever got outside of the hash marks. Powell sends it deep. And that's going to go into the end zone. Nice kick. And you know, with Powell. That's something that the Flyers have been missing this season. Powell been dealing with an injury uh, that he sustained in soccer. Um, yeah, we've had uh, uh, Arthur in there to kick a few times, and he's not done a bad job. No, he's done well this season. Uh, Easton Powell, one of the best kickers in the state and he's just a sophomore. Yeah, and he as you can see right there, he's got some power behind that leg. And uh, you know my guess is just like baseball, they say to hit a home run, it's not about strength, it's more about bat speed. And I my guess is that's the true for kicking and also it's how quick can you whip that leg around there and get it. Dante Jones with the carry. He's a junior. 148 pounds, five foot seven. Listed as a wide receiver, but he took the handoff there. Yeah, just a quick pitch out to the left side. Franklin County's speed. Paying dividends, close out quickly. Batted down at the line there. To tell you how much of a, a rushing team they are, they, the, the Bulldogs only average uh, about 16 yards per game in passing, uh, basically two receptions. Is that Peyton Ledford? That that is today? Peyton Ledford. The congratulations to him for a Wendy's Heisman uh, scholarship winner announced this week. All right. And again, a tackle for a loss. Something's wrong with the Bulldog offense because a lot of those look like busted plays to me. That something that should be happening is not happening. And of course, one of those things is a block. <laughs> well, the Franklin County defense in front is just. They're shooting A gaps, they're walking up linebackers into the A gaps, and they are just bringing the heat. Yeah, they're blitzing almost every play. Jake Owen again with a punt. Not as much on it this time, and it's fair caught at the 48. Got Shaw again with the clean catch this time. A little bit better field position for the Flyers. There's a look at Galloway. He's on the near side slot. That handoff goes to Jaquan Crawford, just a freshman. Doesn't get much. Now maybe a yard. Felt like he did a little too much sidestepping there. If he had hit the hole a little harder, might have got a little 
more yardage there. Smith airing it out, got a man open. Oh, but it's well overthrown. Zach Claudio, the intended receiver, but that ball was a, about 10 yards past him, and he was wide open. Nobody was within 10 yards of him. Third and nine now here for Franklin County. And Clint, the way Franklin County's defense is playing in this, I don't know that I would be worried about going forward on fourth down if you don't get it here. Yeah. Oh, that's off the hands of Mormon. Still almost scooped up there by uh, James Harris, I think. Elijah Smith, two passes on this drive and high on that one and then overshot his target, well overshot his target on the previous pass. Punting it away for Franklin County will be Ty Taylor. He's a junior. Good snap. Good punt. And a nice roll gets it down to the 10 yard line. So the Bulldogs are getting worse and worse field position. Yeah, now Franklin County did flip the field there uh, against John Harden. The Bulldogs are coached by Doug Preston. That may be him there. I don't know, but kind of looks like a head coach, doesn't he? A little bit. So that is the head coach. I am getting confirmation in my ear. And that's a nice handoff to Cavalli Pittman. He's going to pick up the first down. They got a lot of quick misdirection. The Bulldogs do. Yeah, that time uh, wing back counter. Uh, I don't want to say this is a wing T offense, but it's very similar. A pass, and it is caught for about six yards. That's a good play and a thing that will kind of make Franklin County play a little more honest. That was King Martin with the catch. Just a little play action. He's a sophomore. You get this, he's listed at six feet and a half. Look at that. That's what it says right there. I guess, you know. I guess he's proud of that half. I don't know. <laughs> Nothing that time. Nope. My guess is uh, King, by the time he's a senior, that hit, he'll just declare himself six more. <laughs> they proved me wrong. Franklin County almost took the hand off themselves there. Yeah, that was Machiavelli Rozier with the carry. And we have another timeout, I think, called by John Harden. Uh, they've only got one left for the remainder of the half. We'll take it with them. Franklin County on top, 7-0, 308 left in the first. 
Game of the Week is brought to you by J.O. Osborne with the Franklin County Farm Bureau. The Franklin County Farm Bureau's J.O. Osborne wishes all of our local teams a healthy, competitive, and successful season. J.O. and Kentucky Farm Bureau have been insuring Frankfurt since 1943. With them on your team, when you experience a loss from an accident or storm, it can be a real game changer. Game of the Week is brought to you by Tim and Rebecca Hubbard with Exit Realty Crutcher. Choose local realtors that treat you like family because real estate is what we do and families are why we do it. Welcome back, folks, to Benny Watkins Field. Clint Goins and Chris Cole here with you. Thanks again for joining us on the Game of the Week here on Cable 10. We've enjoyed bringing it to you all year long. I think this might be our last football broadcast. Frankfurt High is playing tonight as well at home, but I think next week, should both teams win, they will both be on the road. Unless one of the one seeds get upset tonight. So it's possible. It's another first down for John Harden. Cavalli Pittman with the carry. Juice Robinson with the tackle. Number four against number four. There's another look. Actually, uh, Juice was the last guy in there. The first guy was Jeremy Walters, and then Hunter Gottschall. And off there to Machiavelli Rosier, and like I said, he's a, he's a powerful back. I'm, I'm surprised he's not leading this team in rushing because he is second, and he's averaging 50 yards uh, per game at, you know, after nine games. He's hard to bring down. Yeah, he, like I said, he, he squares his body up gets his pads out in front of him. Runs a lot like Christian Moore from Franklin County. Mm -hmm. And we've not seen Christian uh, take a handoff yet so far today. He's their leading rusher. First man through this time for the Bulldogs. Rosier this time tackled at the line of scrimmage by Alex Green. One of the seniors on this Franklin County team. The senior class has had such success on a gridiron. Uh, you know, two years ago, a fingertip away from a state yes, championship. Yes. What a game. Keeper, and I don't well, think they he got anything. Get it. No, <laughs> no. They're going to give him the line of scrimmage. I'm not sure he got up there. Low man wins, and Franklin County's defensive line got a lot lower than John Harden. Yeah, Great I think camera work there on the replay. I think, quite frankly, he's about a. A half short shot of getting back to the line of scrimmage. Let's see if they're going to go for it or just let the clock run out here uh, on the first quarter. They're going to go for it. Or at least think about it. Maybe try to draw the flyers off sides. We've got to be real careful not to be in the neutral zone. So they called their last timeout in the first quarter. One and a half seconds left on the clock. I can't figure that one out. Yeah, I'm not uh, figuring that out either. 
look at some of the defensive highlights from that first quarter from Franklin County. Yeah. They have been in the backfield and disrupting this John Harden offense so far. Now, John Harden has moved the ball about 37 yards on this drive. Uh, but yeah. They've gotten a couple of first downs. But, wow, I, I, unless... Unless the back judge's hand was up and they felt they were going to get a five-yard penalty, I can't figure out why would he just let the clock run out. That's baffling. It'd still be fourth and one either way. And I didn't look at the clock to see what it was when they set the ball. I didn't either. How long do they have? 40 seconds? 30. 30 seconds. Well, it may have been awfully close. I think I'd taken the five yard hit and kicked the ball. Another quarterback sneak, and he, he ain't going to get it. He ain't going to get it, folks. Two quarterback sneaks, and Franklin County just packs that line and shuts that noise down. The first quarter comes to a close. The Flyers on top, seven to zero. In today's fast paced housing market, you need realtors with experience who understand that timing is essential when finding the perfect home for the right price. Tim and Rebecca Hubbard with Exit Realty Crutcher are here to ensure that you and your family have a positive experience from start to finish. Real estate is what we do. And families are why we do it. If your property has trees, you know they add beauty and value, but they also have the potential to do serious damage. That's where the team of pros at Estate Tree Service come in. From trimming and shaping to complete removal, including stumps, the team at Estate Tree Service gets the job done, even in an emergency. Estate Tree Service has been the area's premier tree service since 1957, and our long list of satisfied clients can tell you why. The name you know and trust. Estate Tree Service. All right, John Harden has had the ball three times and they punted it away twice and turned it over on downs once. Franklin County has had the ball twice, never in this good to field position. They've scored once and punted it away once. This is student body right to the short side of the field. Solomon Bennett with the push out of bounds. Claudio with the carry. And he gets seven yards. Yeah, he took a pretty good lick on that one at the end. I'd say run that one again. It was highly successful. Oh, we got a guy that uh, jumped off. Same guy that made the tackle. That'll be a first down for Franklin County. Pass play over the flat. That's Mormon. Gets it down to about the 28 yard line. Yeah, I've noticed the last couple of games uh, with the surge that Christian Moore has been given Franklin County in the backfield. They've moved uh, Mormon out on the edge in that wide spot uh, to let him use that strength and speed uh, out on the edge more. What I liked about that play is you saw Carson Greenville, the center. Oh, wide open. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> to lead Galloway right through his hands. Yeah, and they lined up. 
same play formation they had earlier to start the drive. Claudio just stops, has Galloway wide open and right through his arms. Hit him in a bad place, right in the hands. Anyway, I was going to say that on the previous passway, Greenwell, the center, got out there downfield to block for Mormon. Had he made it past the, the initial tackle, Greenwell was set to lay out somebody. There's Christian Moore on a carry. And the Wildcat right to Christian Moore. And he's going to go into the end zone, and the Flyers are now on top. 13 to nothing. Good looking sophomore football player right there. Yeah, you should uh, put Flyer fans at ease because they know they're going to be losing uh, Claudio and Mormon and Galloway. But they are going to have Christian Moore back next year. We'll have Gavin Hurst back next year, hopefully healthy. Easton Powell, just a sophomore. You know, we probably won't have an opportunity, but I got a feeling that Easton Powell might be able to hit a 40 yard. Oh, I think so too. Here's another look at the TD by Christian Moore. Flyers on top, 14 to nothing with 10.55 left until half. Game of the Week is brought to you by Estate Tree Service. We have a solution for all your tree care needs. Estate Tree Service provides expert tree care and preservation. Call 502-229-5258 for a free estimate. Bob Allen is Kentucky's dealmaker. Shop Bob Allen of Frankfurt for a winning selection of new Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram, as well as quality late model pre-owned. Click and save at BobAllenFrankfurt.com. Welcome back, folks. Clint Goins, Chris Cole here with you. Flyers lead 14 to nothing over the John Harden Bulldogs from Elizabethtown, Kentucky. Here are the first round of playoff football. We were talking about Christian Moore being a sophomore with Gavin Hurst coming back next year. Seven of your 11 starters on offense will be back next year. Awesome. Awesome. That ball is picked up at the five and Lamar's Bowen picks it up, but he is tackled at about the 15. Here's the scoring drive. This is Bowen with the catch. And then this is Christian Moore with a nice carry in the Alba Wildcat. He gets it again and takes it into the end zone. Now the scoreboard says the ball is on the 22. I don't think so, Chris. I think it's on the 17. Okay, there they've switched it. 16. They say. There's their leading rusher. Layson Anderson, and he gets a couple, but not much. And Jason Collins well, he had the ball. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't mind seeing that again. Says uh, the announcer trying to direct from his announcer position, but he may have. You know, he may have had it. Oh, looky here. We're going to see it. Thank you, Mr. Crow. The only thing I can think of is they blew it. Oh, yeah, he was down. He was down. 
just barely, but he was down. And then they read that play well. That's John John Griffin, I think. He gets in the backfield. Big smile on his face. Yeah, he flinched right before the ball was snapped. Yeah, but if he didn't break the the plane, neutral I think zone. he's all, yeah, neutral zone, I think he's all right. It's kind of hard to tell from that angle. But big loss, third and ten now. Yeah. John John, just a junior, he'll be back next year. Missed false start right there as the left guard. And again, a flock of flyers. And on the tackle, Peyton Ledford. This is credit, fourth and 10. My guess is the Red Hounds, uh, they're not going to go for it here. No. They're going to punt it away. And, you know, Franklin County's off uh, defensive line, offensive line, really controlling this game uh, so far on the size differential up front. Just paying huge dividends right now for Franklin County. Jake Owens puts his leg into it. Gets a nice uh, bulldog bounce. Picked up by Gottschall. Cuts his uh, direction back and gets it out across the 50. Nice run by Hunter Gottschall. Never quit on it. No. I'm not sure where he started, but that was about a 20 yard pickup. I mean, he's getting it at around the 36. 37. And he gets it out to the 53. So, okay, 16 yards. It's not too bad. Take a 16 yard punt return every game. Oh, yeah. Smith, that pass was low, and I thought it was almost going to be picked off by number 11, Maurice Green. Yeah, we've seen Smith short arm and throws. Uh, we've seen him overshoot his receivers. Uh, the only completion he's had so far was just a quick screen out to Mormon. Well, he should have had two receptions, though. That one touchdown pass that was dropped. That's uh, here's a pass to Mormon. A good tackle there, open field by B.J. Stewart. We got a late flag on the play. Looks like Delano Collins is saying, what, what, me, what did I do? Let's see what the white hat says. Field goal. Who was it? Okay, illegal participation, says Terry Johnson. But I don't know what that could be. What's illegal participation? Unless he came on late. Caden Norman again, still on his feet. It's awfully close to, does get the first down. 
Down to the 37. Back to pass again. This time Ledford drops it. He probably wouldn't have gotten very far had he caught it though. He should have had this one. Because he caught it about the line of scrimmage, and I think he was about to be wrapped up by Green. I don't know that he could bring him down by himself. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> discussion here. I didn't see a flag being thrown, but on the wrong hash. Oh, I see. Post uh, route to Mormons wide open here. They throw it to Collins. He gets a couple before he is tagged by King Martin. You know, it was that extra half inch that, that's what did it for King, I think. Yep. He's six feet and a half. Oh, my goodness. Ball thrown a little bit behind the intended receiver. Picked off by King Martin. And we got a flag on the play. Probably uh, unnecessary roughness or personal foul of some type. But on whom? Looks like it's going to be Franklin County since they look like they're getting ready to walk it off. That's I a, didn't see anything, but that's a shame that. Personal foul. Personal foul is the call against the player. It's 15 yards. To add insult to injury, you have a, an interception. Smith passed just a little bit behind his receiver. I think if he'd well, he had got two wide Mormon, open. I think he, if he hit Mormon, uh, he would have been in for a touchdown, and maybe Galloway would have been in too. But instead, it's Bulldog ball. Now let's go back and look at that personal foul. It's away from the ball. Boom, there's a couple of hard hits, but they're, they're yeah. gonna stick. Uh, Elijah Smith with the late hit. Yeah, but, but you know, I had a, just a half second earlier, one of the Bulldog players laid one of the flyers out. That's, uh, of course, I guess the refs can't be looking every place at the same time. Quick handoff. No, oh, excuse me, fake me out again. And that's Anderson with the carry, and he's going to pick up the first down. Keep those legs moving. 
He didn't have it at first, but he kept on churning and picks it up. Everybody bit on Rozier. And Galloway hanging on to the Calvary arrow. Yeah. Same play. Yep. This time, Flyers didn't bite on it, and it's a loss of about four yards. Now they're saying just two yards, so they gave him forward progress that I didn't see, apparently. Receiver, the aforementioned King Martin. That half inch couldn't help him. <laughs> yeah, he needed several more inches. I'd say another foot or two, maybe. I'm not sure Kareem Abdul Jabbar could have caught that ball. Maybe Yao Ming. <laughs> No, Yao Ming didn't have the hands for it. And Peyton Leffer brought the lumber. Yes. And that's going to be a loss of about four or five, I guarantee it. Because, yeah, six yards, they say. So it's, the ball is now back on the bulldog side of the field. One thing I love, we got a timeout. Apparently do. Franklin County had to call it, I guess, because the Bulldogs are out of timeouts. We'll take it with them. 423 left to go until half here on Cable 10. Game of the Week is brought to you by Bob Allen. Bob Allen is Frankfurt's dealmaker. Visit Bob Allen's new state-of-the-art showroom at 925 Versailles Road and discover Central Kentucky's best selection of new Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram models, as well as pre-owned. Shop BobAllenFrankfurt.com. Welcome back, folks, to playoff football. Opening round of the playoffs start tonight. And here at Franklin County High School, we've got the Bulldogs from John Harden High School. Jake Owens will be punting it away again. His legs gonna be tired for the night's over. And that gets a flyer bounce before it's down by King Martin. Boy, he had boys everywhere, isn't he? Yep. Um, the flyers will take over from their own 23 with 4.15 left to try to put some more points on the scoreboard. Smith hands off this time to Galloway. He cuts back, still on his feet, tries to spring loose, but he picks up about eight, I think. Clint, if we get a chance to watch that play again, I want you to watch the block that Christian Moore sets on the edge uh, on that play. It's absolutely beautiful. Quick pass to Mormon, gets a good block. There's Greenwell downfield helping out. Mormon gets it across midfield for the first down and a lot more. There's another look. 
I just like the fact that the center is, is that far downfield blocking for his teammates. You know. He does a good job. I mean, you never see him hiking over somebody's head. Very rarely in the dirt. Now that I've said that, I've put the broadcaster's jinx on him and something bad will probably happen. But. Greenwell's taking a lot of snaps for Franklin County. Got a flag on the play. Looks like it might be a hold. Juice Robinson on the carry. Yep. That'll be coming back. The same number two. Galloway. Galloway. That's actually going to be an 11 yard penalty because it was a yard behind the line of scrimmage. So, yep. Blitz picked up nicely there, and that's going to be caught. Caught by Zach Claudio. How many times have we seen him in his career do that up here? Yeah. And that was a pretty well covered ball by the defense. That was Cam McFadden. Flyers 25 yards away, another quick pass. Mormon makes it, and can he stay on his feet? Yep, he's in for six. Yep, just that little rollout pass. But I thought it was almost uh, tipped again. by a Bulldog defender. I would have liked to have seen it be a little bit higher. We'll see it again after Powell kicks the PAT. Marshall with the hold, the kick is up, and of course it is good. 21 to zero the score. Here's another look at it. Emmanuel Smith throws it. Mormon catches it and then runs it in. Flyers up by three touchdowns here on the Cable 10 game of the week. The reason I went to traditional bank, I just felt at peace. The atmosphere was different. Anytime we need anything, traditional bank's always there for us. Can't say enough about them. Tradition to me means integrity. That's what our product's based on. Just the way I did it 25 years ago, we're doing it now on a mass scale. My name's Curtis Mackley, and I choose Traditional Bank because of the relationship we have formed with them and their integrity. Welcome to Mingy Beef Jerky. There's a look at Coach Eddie James. And his daughter, who has uh, dyed her uh, hair blue for the occasion. Why not? Why not? The good thing about hair is it grows back. Speak for yourself. <laughs> for most people. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chris. I'm in, I'm in for young people. You know, if they do something, get a stupid haircut or something like that, you know. And mine grows, it's just spotty. <laughs> Got Shaw on the tackle for Franklin County. There's a good look at him. 
we all can't be blessed with good hair like the Tates. That's right. We see uh, Luke Toothaker check into the game. Good to see him back. Good to, was he the one that broke his collarbone or just his elbow? Yeah, you see him with the brace on that elbow. So good to see him back on the football field. Timeout by County. Yeah, they want the ball back. They want the ball back. You know. Or they might get it with, you know, if they can hold them here, they might be able to get it back with about a minute to go. Yeah, and they get the ball to start the second half. Yeah. And if you score, if, if Franklin County were, were able to score before this half ends and then score on their opening drive, then, then the running clock comes into play and it is virtually impossible for a team to come back after yeah. the running clock goes. I have never seen it done. No, because you then become, you're playing two opponents. Yes. Well, I think that's a good, I think that's good for the game because you know, it's still good to play a little bit of football, but you won't be out there uh, as long and, and risk injury and, and get, uh, was that an incomplete pass? That was an incomplete pass I don't by think the that hair was, of their chinny chin chin. I don't think that was a smart play. No, because you just basically you gave the county a timeout. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Run the ball. Run a sweep. Because county's got one timeout. Yeah. Now you're in a situation if the clock is running here. Frank County comes the timeout. Yeah. And you're putting the ball away with a minute 45 left. The Flyers will have, you know, a minute 45 to go down the field and score again. And we know that they can do it in a minute 45. I think that may have been Anderson on the carry. He's going to be well below his average tonight, folks. And can no, he that, that last time out? That was uh, Dante Jones. All right, we'll step aside as well. 147 to go here in the first half on the Cable 10 Game of the Week Playoff Edition. Game of the Week is brought to you by Traditional Bank. When your business is looking to win, with tough competition around every corner, you need high performers backing you up. Traditional Bank's local team will stand by your side as a trusted partner, your friendly neighbor, and your biggest fan. It's time to make the switch. Traditional Bank, member FDIC. Game of the Week is brought to you by Whitehead Hancock. Whitehead Hancock Plumbing has been serving Frankfurt families for more than 100 years. You can trust Whitehead Hancock for all your plumbing, heating, cooling, and septic needs. Call them today at 502-227-2213 for 24-hour emergency service or visit their website at whiteheadhancock.com. Welcome back, folks. 147 left to go until halftime. At halftime, we'll have some halftime highlights. We'll probably show you the FCHS marching band under the direction of Josh Tapas. Oh, and there's an offside penalty, but you know, that's just gonna be five yards. So it's not enough for a first down. How do they that may have been Collins again. Did they attempt a fake here with only being three yards short? I don't know. I'm thinking, yeah, I don't I don't think I would either. 
Gutschall with the catch, over the shoulder catch. <laughs> well, falls down, but the Flyers have a minute 40 to go about 70 yards. I believe they could do it. Well, he has been almost underplaying every punt. Uh, I think at halftime, I'm telling him, you need to back up 10 more yards. Mm -hmm. Wherever you think you should be, back up 10 more. Mm -hmm. Smith, this time to Galloway on a a play that has uh, been quite successful tonight. That little pass out to the flat. And Galloway picks up another first down. There's another look on our white head hand cognizant replay. Yeah, but I would have told him to stay outside the numbers and use that sideline. Yeah, get out of bounds. Smith again, that ball knocked away by Noah Bowling. Oh, excuse me, Maury Screen, that's, that's number 11. Noah Bowling, number 10. Good play by Mr. Green. Yeah, and Smith. We've seen him live dangerous on that play. He's got to get a little more arch on the ball. And that is through the hands of Juice Robinson. And now it's third and 10. I'd run that sweep with Claudio around the outside where he takes a direct snap and follows the train. Uh -huh. And I was gonna say, I'd run that play where Morgan goes up the middle. But looking at the defense they're in now, I changed my mind. They're gonna throw it again. Smith puts it up there and it's picked off. That is Lamoris Bowen. Oh, that was Claudio that threw it. I didn't notice that. Uh, some of the fans are saying we got to run the ball. They are not happy with the offensive play selection by the Flyers on that particular series, even though they're up 21 to nothing. Oh, that was Smith. Still, he threw it. That's his second interception. And again, underthrown. And again, man, they are just in the backfield. Looks like they've read the playbook. That's two. Alex Green with the tackle. Here's the end of the last play. And that should have been a... Mike should have been unsportsmanlike or a personal foul. On which play? Well, it looked to me like the Bulldogs did it first. Claudio just retaliated. And of course, oftentimes it's the second person that gets the call. But Taylor with the tackle there. Yeah, Rozier with the ball. We haven't, uh, he hasn't carried the ball a lot lately. He had a lot of good success in the first quarter. But that's going to bring the first half to a close. We'll come back, show you some highlights, show you some band, and the Flyers lead 21 to zero here on the Cable 10 Game of the Week Playoff Edition. Game of the Week Halftime Show is brought to you by Classic Gold. 
Art carved class rings are available at Classic Gold Master Jewelers on 859 East Main Street. Classic Gold Master Jewelers has an amazing selection of jewelry that anyone will love. Classic Gold also provides custom services like pearl restringing, engraving, watch repair, ring resizing, and custom designs. Classic Gold Master Jewelers, 859 East Main Street. All right, folks, it's time for the Classic Gold Master Jewelers halftime highlights. The Flyers came out here, and I think they can kind of smell victory from the get-go, and of course, they haven't won it yet. But they are up 21 to nothing, and uh, the Bulldogs of John Harden High School, they just have not had a whole lot of offensive success. Here's a run right up the gut by Caden Morgan. That was the first touchdown, if I'm not mistaken. Later on, Smith passes it to Morgan. That's a nice carry. And then Christian Moore out of the Wildcat has a nice run. So they say, hey, let's do that again. This time, Christian takes it into the end zone. And there's a nice tackle by Peyton Ledford. Elijah Smith makes a nice throw and a nice catch downfield from Claudio. And then Norman catches the ball in the flat and runs it in. Those are the three Franklin County touchdowns. We don't believe the band is going to play tonight, uh, a halftime show. So we will step aside here and we'll come back in just a few minutes for the second half here on the Cable 10 Game of the Week. FPB knows reliable internet is more important than ever. It lets us work from home share life with family and friends, and make vital connections online. To help, qualifying customers can now access the new affordable connectivity program and step up to fast, reliable FPB internet at a savings of up to $30 per month. Learn more about this new opportunity. Visit FPB online today.
Tune in to Around 10, Frankfurt's very own morning show. We cover all the happenings in the capital city every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. Live on Cable 10, Facebook, and YouTube. Remember, if it happens around town, it's on Around 10. Well, welcome back, folks, to Billy Watkins Field. I just saw the Around 10 uh, spot there, and I, I just want to say that, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of Around 10. It's like Frankfurt's Today Show, and uh, it comes on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at, uh, you guessed it, Around 10. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, you know, they, they talk about Frankfurt stuff, so uh, you don't get that. Uh, anywhere else quite frankly so uh, anyway we are back here at Franklin County High School first half is over Franklin County leads John Harden High School from Elizabethtown 21 to 0 and the Flyers get the ball first here in the second half Thing. It could have been a, a worse than 21 nothing Franklin County yeah. with two two interceptions deep in the well I think they were both in the red zone weren't they? Uh, both the attempts uh, yeah, where they were picked we're, off was inside the 20s. But yeah. Yes. Yeah. Number 12, Jay Kwan Crawford, back deep for the Flyers. Jay Kwan off the tee there. Yeah. It's not that windy outside, is it? Um, Jake Owens, the Mr. Everything kick here uh, for. Wow. Yeah, he kicked that one through the end zone. Uh, yeah, I would uh, I'd like to see him and Easton Powell in the battle. In a shootout? Yeah, yeah. Just you know, put the ball in the 40. If everybody makes it, move it back five yards. Put the ball on the hey. five. Both make it to the back five yards. Why not? Why not? So Franklin County starts on their 20 yard line here to begin the second half with a three touchdown lead. Emmanuel Smith hands off. And that is the lead Galloway and he was down, and that looked awfully close to a horse collar to me. It was close. Let's look at it again here on our white head. Hancock gets a replay. That is a horse collar. Good way to get someone hurt. Yeah. I'm a little disappointed they didn't call that. He didn't hold on very long, but still. Mormon up the middle again, still on his feet, battling. He got a flag down in the secondary. It could be a number of things, I guess. It could be a face mask. It could be. Illegal block downfield. I think they're going to call face mask against Harden. It looks like they're pointing their feet in that direction. You are correct. Is that a. They distinguish now, right? Or do they go back to where they didn't distinguish? Uh, it's a five. It's a five yarder. Yeah, I don't I don't like that. I you know you held the face mask, it should be 15 yards, period. I don't care if you meant to do it or not. The result is the same. There's that wildcat again with Christian Moore and you know there wasn't much there, he still got about four yards. Power football. Following his block, Peyton Ledford seals that left end. Moore goes right up the middle. I want to give the love, some love to the uh, Franklin County starting offensive line. Chris Hunley's your right tackle. 
Uh, Hunter Pop, your right guard. Uh, the center is Carson Greenville. We've mentioned him. Your left guard is J.J. Ardon. And your left tackle is Julian Bosch. And Bosch, the little one out of the bunch. Yeah. <laughs> He's the tiny lad. <laughs> Ledford, just a fullback dive off the right side. This is Moore with the carry, dragging defenders down inside the 15. And here whistles and there's a flag and I think that's gonna be uh, tackling out of bounds or something. I mean, he pushed him clear out of bounds. So, it's probably gonna be an unsportsmanlike against the Bulldogs. Personal foul, number seven. It's Dante Jones. Marquette off half the distance. Yeah, they haven't done that yet, have they? No. So that's going to get it down to the 12. Seven. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Math was always my strong. Uh, or my weak point, not my strong suit. Yes, you know, some guys don't, you know, they don't handle losing very well. Um, and sometimes that's a good thing. You know, you don't want losing to be pleasant. You want it to leave a bad taste in your mouth, but you just can't, um, you know, you can't take it outside the confines of the game. Hand off to Galloway, and he gets in. Franklin County has four touchdowns and by three different ball carriers. Yep, a little halfback dive, and you kind of had a feeling Galloway was the recipient uh, that unsportsmanlike from the John Harden player, and I think that may have been a statement right there. <laughs> Here you go. Easton Powell back again for the PAT. High snap, Marshall gets it down. The kick is up and good. 28 to zero. Flyers on top of the John Harden High School Bulldogs right here on the Cable 10 Game of the Week Playoff Edition. In 1972, a young David Tolls vowed to jump the Kentucky River on his big wheel. He did not make it. We can rebuild him. We have the capability to make the world's perfect mechanic better Stronger, faster. <laughs> David Tolls Tires and Auto Service on Duncan Road. Welcome back, folks, to Benny Watkins Field. David Tolls, if you're watching this game, uh, remind me that I need to stop by there and get some new tires before Christmas. Because I'm driving on some bald ones at the moment. That's not good. No, no. Uh, it's okay as long as the road's dry. But take it at about the seven yard line. Dante Jones, the one that uh, drew the flag earlier. 
Gets it up to just past the 20, I think. Oh, there's a, that was close to a face mask there if it wasn't, but the officials missed it. Well, face masks are like holding. <laughs> well, he may, uh, you know, I couldn't really tell if he grabbed it or not. He could have dra grabbed his shoulder pads right by. That's Rozier again, and the Flyers stop him, but he does pick up about four. They give him five yards on the carry. Not telling Coach Preston how to do his job, but I think I'd give that young man the ball a little more often. Tonight, anyway. Oh, there you go. He gets it again, and maybe a yard. Or two. Toothaker with the stop. Nope, you're right, Chris. One yard. Terry Johnson says so, so you know it must be true. Big third down here for John Harden. Yep. Didn't work out so well as John John Griffin throws Cavalli Pittman down to the ground for a loss. John John just fought off the would be blocker, got into the backfield, and just ate him up. Fourth and nine. We're going to punt it away again. Jake Owens punts it away. Gotchaw back. And there's a flag on the play. And I'm going to say it's a hold or a block in the back. Holding. Huh. So they're going to kick it again, or are they going to assess it at the end of the run? What are they going to do? Depends on where the hold was, I guess. Well, the hold was in the backfield on one of the up backs blocking for the punter. So they're going to kick it again. If they accept it, they could just turn it down and keep the ball, which is what I would do, I think. Don't give the ball back once you've got it. a nice one-headed catch there by Christian Moore as the official trying to throw the ball to the other official. Well, we're going to step it off right here. Huh. I'm not sure that was assessed correctly, Chris. And a fumble, but luckily Claudio picks it up and, and gains about chicken something into <laughs> chicken salad. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Quoting, unquote, <laughs> Clint Goins here. <laughs> yeah. Picks up about four and a half yards on that carry, I think. Well, four yards. Yep. Second to six now 
for the Flyers. They have played almost. Uh, that goes to Cade Mornman. He only gets about a yard. Uh, they have played almost a flag free game thus far. I think they've had one flag. All right, don't give me that look. <laughs> did I just give him the broadcaster's jinx? Is that what I did? Yes. back in flushed out of the pocket decides to keep it himself he's going to get the first down so again we're making some chicken salad yep a little side step there i thought 54 which is kevon black may have been able to drag him down, but he just he couldn't reach him in time. Manuel Smith just flat out outran him. Huh. Not this time, though. Now, what was you saying in the first half about the center snap? Well, th that was still a catchable snap. I mean, it's at his face, yes, but it's not over his head. That's still on the quarterback, man. <laughs> Typical lineman. <laughs> did you play center? I did not. I was on the line, but I did not play center. They didn't trust me to be center. <laughs> I've told you my audible story, haven't I? Yeah. So I played center. There's a flag on the play, holding against. Uh-oh, you're gonna blame that on me, aren't you? Yes, I am. Okay. So we've had a bad snap. <laughs> now we've had an offensive flag. Everybody at home, you can blame Clint Goins. <laughs> Make a chicken sour in that salad. Uh, oh man, that's a big penalty there. Yeah. Second and 30. Well, the school board says second and 20. I don't know that that's accurate, though. That almost picked off. It was thrown into traffic. Third and forever. Yeah, third and none such. Or at least Millville. Yeah. You're right, it's third and 31. You're right, they added. Uh, they had it wrong on the scoreboard. Smith throws over to Claudio. Did he catch that or not? Because I'm not sure that that ball wasn't on the ground. And I, they're going to mark him down, but I think that ball come out before he was down. I think we had two miss. Here's another look here. Slow it down right about there. Incomplete. That's an incomplete pass. Yeah. And that's a fumble. <laughs> Flyers will punt it away here. Ty Taylor. And 
it gets a bulldog bounce. Christian Moore downs it for Franklin County, and Bulldogs probably have uh, some of the best field position they've had in a while. Take over from their own 39, but I'm going to say, you know, we don't have stats here, but I'm going to say John Harden has had maybe five first downs the whole game. Well, they had the one drive that they got about 40 total yards on, and then Franklin County forced the punt. Anderson in motion. Gets the handoff, gets to the outside, picks up about four. He is tackled by Jeremy Walters. Jeremy Walters is the team leader in tackles when you factor in both uh, solo tackles and assisted tackles with the leader in solo tackles and, and just solo tackles is uh, Peyton Ledford. Yeah, because when he hits you, you're going down. I'm out on the field. So John Harden calls their first time out a little bit late here. Uh, they, a lot later than they did in the first half. We'll take it as well. Franklin County on top by four touchdowns here on the Cable 10 Game of the Week. We depend on the internet for so much these days, but not all Kentuckians have access to reliable broadband service. That's why Kentucky Farm Bureau joined the American Connection Project and we now provide free Wi-Fi access from the parking lots of nearly 200 KFB locations across the state. You see, Kentucky Farm Bureau does more than just insure homes and autos. We help ensure that more Kentuckians stay connected. Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment. Welcome back, folks. Look at Doug Preston, the head coach. John Harden High School. Second and six. And a handoff to the first man through, and the Flyers plugged that hole pretty good. Peyton Ledford, we've got the flyer down. Brennan Robinson is on the turf. And not feeling, I think it's Brennan Robinson. Yes, it is, and he is, he is not feeling too good. All right, Franklin County is coming over to the sideline, so we'll step aside here while they attend to Mr. Robinson. And we'll come back with more football here on the game of the week. In today's fast paced housing market, you need realtors with experience who understand that timing is essential when finding the perfect home for the right price. Tim and Rebecca Hubbard with Exit Realty Crutcher are here to ensure that you and your family have a positive experience from start to finish. Real estate is what we do. And families are why we do it. If your property has trees, you know they add beauty and value, but they also have the potential to do serious damage. That's where the team of pros at Estate Tree Service come in. From trimming and shaping to complete removal, including stumps, the team at Estate Tree Service gets the job done, even in an emergency. Estate Tree Service has been the area's premier tree service since 1957, and our long list of satisfied clients can tell you why. The name you know and trust, Estate Tree Service. Your meters are getting smarter. Mission, upgrade all FPB meters with advanced digital electric and water meters. Codename, Smart Meters. Objective, 
shorter outage durations, automatic reports of service issues, real-time access to usage information, reduction of utility consumption, lower monthly bills, flexible payment options. FPB has chosen to accept this mission. Stay tuned for direct contact. All right, Mr. Robinson is up and uh, he's going to slowly walk off, but under his own power, so that's good. Chris, give me an update on the uh, Frankfurt High game going on in downtown Bell Point. So Frankfurt High beats Ludlow in the first round, uh, 50 to 13. Uh, they will go on to face Newport Catholic uh, next week on the road as Newport Central Catholic uh, big winner tonight in the first round against Emnitz, uh, 52 to nothing. All right, thank you. Good luck, Fly, uh, Panthers, next week. Doesn't quite get to the first down marker. I think he's going to be uh, about a yard or two short. There is a flag on the play. And there's a flag. And it looks like the Bulldogs are walking backwards. Side line oh, just sideline warning. So, so that's just a warning. It's fourth and one. Looks like the Bulldogs are going to go for it here. We've seen them go for it before and did not have a whole lot of luck. But they tried to quarterback sneak it both times. And they have called their second timeout of the half here in the third quarter with 2.21 left to go. We will step aside once again and come back with more football. The Flyers on top, 28-0. In 2020, with COVID-19, we had a state mandate shutdown. We relied upon Traditional Bank for their advice and guidance in obtaining the PPP loan. I can appreciate that Traditional Bank is still locally owned. We choose them for health savings accounts. We choose them for any business loan that we need. My name is Dr. Todd Jacobs of Helderman and Jacobs Vision Center. I choose Traditional Bank because they value personal relationships and are highly invested in our community. Welcome back, folks. Clint Goins, Chris Cole here with you on what will most likely be our last game of the season. I think uh, both Franklin County and Franklin High will be moving on. Well, we know Franklin High is. But Franklin County will be on the road should they win tonight, most likely. And um, that'll be it for us, but I want to say that I, I've had a good time calling these games with you. And He did hope, not get it, and nope. there's a flag. And that's probably a hold. So, which I think I would turn down. But I've enjoyed doing it with you. I hope, I hope you viewers at home uh, have enjoyed the games as well. We, we get a little silly sometime, and quite frankly, we've not had too many good football games this year. They've been several. Oh, that's against Franklin County. Alex Green, they say. It's going to be a, uh, a first down because of that penalty. I 
I didn't see that happening. Did you see it happen? That is a tricky one to call. Um, you don't see it called very often. I think if you engage right away low, uh, like with alignment, yeah, it's not going to be called. But if you take two or three steps and then engage slow, that's considered a dangerous play. Well, I thought the lineman had to already be engaged with somebody else, and then you went low. Uh, just as well, the Flyers pick it off. That's Hunter Godshaw, and I think he's going to take this home. And he does. Fortunes change in a heartbeat. And there's a flag on the play. Of course there is. Well, let's let's see here. Blocking them back on the return. Okay, well, it'll still be Franklin County ball, and there's another flag. Uh, Jabari Wilson, the quarterback, slow to get up. You can see him there walking off the field with some assistance. The white hat did not like what Alex Green said, apparently, after the play. So it'll be first down, but it takes points off the board and. Here's a look at the, the interception. I don't know. I didn't see it. it must have been out of screen. Well, they said they said 45 on screen. I didn't see him block anybody. as a former coach. <laughs> Not a big fan. And I guarantee you these guys are probably out of northern Kentucky being uh -huh. a playoff. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'll just leave it at that. And that's going to be all sides on the Flyers. Illegal procedure, I should say. Somebody said at the beginning of the second half how clean <coughs> Franklin County had played. Here's, we're going to look at this last play about the block in the back. There, okay, there it was. There it was at the right hand portion of the screen. That, that was a good call. And that was a good read by, I think it was number seven, Dante Jones. He's seen that play too many times and knew what was going to happen. And he got over there in a hurry. And it's now second and 17. Flyers going the wrong way here after the interception. Christian Moore gets it. Another flag on the play. Oh my goodness. I am so sorry. Holding against Franklin County. They called it on number 58. Oh, okay. I thought he's not in there, but 
Yeah, that's Tate. Colin Tate. Yes. Let's see if we can see it. Yep. Right there. Yeah, you can't be doing that, Colin. You can't be doing that. Second and 30, Smith is going to get sacked for the first time tonight. Number 11, Emmanuel Smith on the quarterback, Coop Keeper. Third and 30, and, you know, what was a potential touchdown, the ball is now on the flyer 12-yard line. Third and 34. Give the ball to Mormon here, and he Another directs. Did they throw a flag on it? Yep. Yep, I see it down there. We've got a couple of uh, Bulldogs down. Number 22 and number 19. 22 is Lamaris Bowen, and he is hopping off the field. 19, of course, is King Martin. All six feet and a half of him. He's uh, laying on his back and grimacing. And Bowen was able to hop off the field, but Martin still, still laying there. Looks like it might be a foot injury, and he's, he's trying to get up. White Hat will come over and make the call. There's a hold. And that penalty is declined. Because they want to get the ball back. Don't give them another shot at third down. Who knows what could happen. So just one second to go. Looks like a lot of those Bulldog players fell over each other. So they start the clock, and before they can even snap the ball, the time expires. So the Flyers will punt when we come back after this break on the Cable 10 Game of the Week. Classic Gold Master Jewelers has an amazing selection of jewelry that anyone will love. Classic Gold also provides custom services like pearl restringing, engraving, watch repair, ring resizing, and custom designs. Classic Gold Master Jewelers, 859 East Main Street. Your car keep you from making important plans. Take it to David Tolls Auto Pro, 515 Duncan Road and 1348 Versailles Road. Franklin County in punt formation. Ty Taylor will do the honors. It's a nice snap. Flat punt takes a flyer roll. 
And it goes on down to the 27 yard line. Not too shabby. And if he could have got that in the air, the wind's blowing that direction. But good punt. The Bulldogs need to get something going if, if they want to have a shot in this game. They have been able to hold Franklin County to just one touchdown this half. But they themselves have not been able to put any points on the board. Rozier gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Walters with the tackle. Oh, they're giving him three yards. Yeah, the ball sits just inside the 30. Now, John Harden's offense, uh, it takes a minute, it, you know, for the play to develop. Yeah. That was Cavalli Pittman on the carry. He is close to a first down. Yeah. They gave, they it, gave it to him. Yeah, sure enough. Peyton Lefford with the tackle on Rozier. Yep. Two big boys going at it. Second and ten here for the John Harden Bulldogs. picking up a little bit. Walters and Gonchal in on the tackle. It'll bring up third and five. That time they tried to get out to the edge with an end around. Franklin County really did a good job they stretching did. that out. We haven't seen them try to do that much today. The Flyer defense has played pretty well tonight. Fumble. Jabari Wilson is going to be tackled for a loss. Alex Green in there to finish him off. That's going to bring up fourth down and about forever. Yeah. Fourth and 13, fourth and. Yeah, something like that. A 
Are they going for it here or are they punting here? They're punting, yes. Franklin County called timeout at the last second. I heard Coach James screaming timeout, timeout. <laughs> All right, so. Nice one-handed catch there by the punter, Jake and Owens. And, uh, and Doug Crow says he's pulling his best Odell Beckham Jr. You know who that is? Clint? Odell Beckham Jr.? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not that old. You know, he was with the Giants at that time, I think, when he made that catch. Against? Uh, that I don't the remember. Cowboys the Cowboys on a Sunday night football, and I thought Chris Collinsworth was going to jump out of the boot <laughs> on that catch. Well, I mean, he's like, he had his back bent back so far. He's like, oh, my gosh. that was. I remember watching that live. Yeah. That was a, a heck of a catch. I've got to say, the, the punter for John Harden's been the one bright spot. Yeah. I mean, the kid's got a foot. Yeah. And I, I think, uh, you know, the chance of playing on Saturday somewhere. It's picked up by Gottschall, but he doesn't get anywhere. But the Flyers have it on their own 30, and we'll see if they can march down the field and put some more points on the board. has looked a little flat this half. Yes, yes, and they've drawn quite a few penalties. I'm not going to say why the penalties have come this half. <laughs> You've already intimated <laughs> how you feel. Add snaps. I promise penalties. I won't do it again this year. <laughs> Christian Moore gets the first down for Franklin County. Keeps the ball on the ground, and I don't think the clock ever started. I don't think it did either. Now, they were having issues with the clock before the game tonight. There we go. It's rolling now. Of course, it always stops a little bit on first down while they reset the chains, but. And off this time to Mormon. I'd never put the ball in the air again. Tonight. I would not either. I wouldn't put the ball in the air and I wouldn't run out of bounds. You've got two power backs that's gonna give you three to four yards every carry. Yes. And what do they do? They put the ball in the air. And let Claudio go to the house. And I think Claudio, barring any flags, Zach Claudio, that's his first touchdown of the night, isn't it? It's the fourth different flyer. Fourth different flyer to score tonight. So, yeah. Well, fifth if you count the, the kicker. You know, one point at a time. So I believe if Easton Powell hits this PAT, we'll have a running clock. No, no. no. must be 36, That's 36, 36. Okay. And they're going for two. And, and there you go. Give it to Christian Moore. No. No? No. Uh, Hey, Smith throws it to uh, Galloway. So I thought if he took off running quicker, he might have scored himself. He could have walked in. Here's another look at the touchdown. 
Claudio with about a about a 50 yard run, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. And then here's the the two point conversion. Just beyond the outstretched arms of Cam McFadden to Jaleed Galloway and Flyers lead 36 nothing. We'll step aside for the final 618 when we come back here on Cable 10. I believe in Kentucky. I believe in Kentucky. <laughs> I believe in getting your hands dirty. I believe the best recipes are never written down. I believe in fried chicken, cornbread, and soup beans. I believe in the cards. I believe in cats. I believe in insurance coverage that helps you sleep at night. I believe in always carrying an umbrella. I am Kentucky. I am Kentucky. Welcome back, everyone, to Franklin County High School. Flyers with the lead 36 to 0 over the visiting Bulldogs of John Harden High School. And it's been a it's been a slow development and a late start because they had some bus trouble apparently uh, getting here. The John Harden team, so the game started at 8 o'clock. But we are about to wrap this thing up. And Franklin County looking pretty good. Who would they play next week, Chris? Well, they'll play the winner of the Spencer Shelby County game. Uh, I keep checking and updating to see if that game has finished yet. No word. Uh, there are some uh, 4A uh, winners tonight. Warren East, which is in that upper bracket. Uh, Central, which out of our district, mm -hmm. uh, automatically advanced because Marion County forfeited their first round game with them tonight. Uh, Catholic advanced, uh, Bourbon County has advanced, Corbin, Letcher County Central, Johnson Central, some familiar names to yes. Franklin County. Yes, uh, your traditional powers in the 4A world. Cavalli Pittman, Pittman with the carry. But Spencer County, they're number one in their district, aren't they? Yes. Yes. And Shelby finished fourth in theirs, so odds are Spencer County is going to win that game. And Franklin County will have to travel to Taylorsville next week. Neutral zone infraction. Flag on play, offside is the call against the players. So even though there's a flag on the play, that would normally stop the clock, but since we are in the running clock mode uh, of a kind of a football's version of a mercy rule in a baseball or softball game, the clock will continue to run, so we only have four minutes to go, so it's, you know, a foregone conclusion that Franklin County is going to win this game. Uh, main thing for the Bulldogs of John Harden will be just to do the best they can and stay positive about their season, that they at least made the playoffs. Yeah. They only won two games, but they but they got in the playoffs, so that's saying something. And they finished third with a two and eight record. So that's really saying something. Um, Clint, while we got just a second and, and things are winding down, uh, we'll give a shout out to the Franklin County seniors on uh, tonight. Their last home game that's right for all purposes uh, that's right Caden Mormon Jaleed Galloway Peyton Ledford Zach Claudio 
Manuel Smith, Alex Green, Carson Greenwell, and P.J. Marshall, um, the seniors. The future is bright for Franklin County. Yes. Um, and Emmanuel Smith. Did you say Emmanuel yes, Smith? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, yeah. It is. Uh, and they've had uh, quite a, f uh, a four years. They probably had the best four years of any senior class here at Franklin County. Yeah, I mean, you've made it state semis last year. Uh, two years ago in the state championship. Yeah. Uh, you know, they've made a deep run. And, I mean, they're capable of making another deep run this yeah. year. Yeah, they are. Their only uh, 4A losses came to Corbin and Louisville Central, which are traditional powers in 4A and if you play them again then you know you'll have some tape to look at of you playing them again mm, that's at least running into the kicker well it's not roughing the kicker well uh, he was blocked into the kicker oh okay all right all right, I'll I'll give you that one. I mean, you know they're, but uh, <laughs> Doug Crow wants to <laughs> wants to disagree. I'm well, going we'll to, I'm going to, to disagree. mostly disagree, but but the blocker was touching him, had his hands on him, and but I I will say that I'm uh, ever so slightly disappointed in the officiating. Uh, tonight, but I'm not going to complain too much. Cohen Taylor, a freshman with the carry for the Flyers. We're probably going to see one more play here. Let me tell you, though, you want to stick around and see the Bill McCoy Insurance Agency play of the game and the Expre Credit Union player of the game. That will happen shortly after the game ends here in about 21 seconds. Uh-oh, fumble picked up. I think we had a, a new quarterback in yeah. there maybe. That was and that'll do. Carter Richardson, I think. And that will in this game, Franklin County wins 36 to zero over the visiting Bulldogs of John Harden High School. They continue their season next week, most likely at Spencer County. We will step aside and come back with the Bill McCoy Insurance Agency play of the game and the Express Credit Union player of the game. Stay with us. The Game of the Week Play of the Game is brought to you by Bill McCoy Insurance Agency, celebrating over 47 years in business. With over 15 companies to shop and collectively over 100 years of experience, call, visit us, or request quotes on BillMcCoyInsuranceAgency.com. You look pretty busy, friend. Why try and manage that much insurance by yourself? A local Trusted Choice independent insurance agent can guide you through it. We'll help with the research, help determine your coverage needs at the right prices, assist with claims, and adapt to your family's needs as they change at no extra cost to you. So, we'll do your insurance, you just do you. <sighs> Game of the Week is brought to you by Expre Credit Union. Expre Credit Union wishes all of our local teams a great season. Score $5 for your school while showing your support with a spirited debit card, featuring your school's colors and mascot. Who will raise the most? Open an Expre spirited account today and let the rivalry continue. Federally insured by NCUA. Expre Credit Union wishes all our local teams a great season. Score $5 for the high school of your choice simply by opening a spirited account featuring your school colors and mascot on your debit card. Show your support, Flyers, Panthers, or Wolverines, who will raise the most. 
Go to spree.org today. Choose wisely. Western Hills, Franklin County, Frankfurt High. Let the rivalry continue. Federally insured by the NCUA. Welcome back, folks. Franklin County wins 36-0. Clint Gones, Chris Cole with you here for the final time this season. It's now time for the Bill McCoy Insurance Agency play of the game. And this is it, folks. Williams, or excuse me, Emmanuel Smith. Throws it down to Zach Claudio and in traffic. Zach catches the ball. And that is your Bill McCoy Insurance Agency play of the game. And now we will look at the Xfree Credit Union player of the game. And I think for the first time this year, we're giving it not to a player, but to a group. The Flyer defense. I mean, they pissed a shutout tonight. Lots of tackles for losses. Uh, they, they, made made that three, game right there tonight. they made uh, a fourth down, uh, stop, turnover on downs. And they just uh, played an excellent game. There's, uh, the Bulldogs had a guy that was averaging uh, 12 yards a carry about, and I don't think he had one yard, one carry for 12 yards. No, uh, the defense all night uh, played amazing from the first snap on all night. That's right. Folks, we are so uh, happy that you have uh, joined us for this season. Put up, up, put up with our silly shenanigans sometimes, but uh, we thank you for supporting our local high schools. Uh, we are so happy to be able to bring you this, and that is because of our loyal sponsors, uh, Spree Credit Union, of course. David Tolls, a sponsor from the get-go, I think. Uh, State Tree Service, uh, the Hubbard team at Exit Realty Crutcher. I'm sure I'm leaving uh, somebody out. Bill McCoy, of course. J.O. Osborne, yes. Uh, and uh, and I've got to get my new tires, David told. I keep, I keep forgetting about that. And, of course, uh, our Whitehead Hancock Innocent Replay, which I think is, uh, we've had them for a number of years. Without them, we, we uh, really couldn't do this at this level. And uh, we have a lot of fun. Hope you have fun uh, watching it. And uh, go Flyers and go Panthers as you continue your second season. For Chris Cole and Doug and David and Zach and the other Zach and John and Crystal and any other people that have been involved this year like uh, Ben and I'm sure I'm reading some people on it. But anyway, I'm Clint Gaunt. Thank you for watching. We'll see you come basketball. Thank <laughs> you.